talk this morning after all the business sessions and so on. Um, we have Sarah Kohler. Sarah stewards land with her husband Mark in western Massachusetts. They keep a small herd of Scottish Highland cattle to keep the pasture land open and a large flock of land-raised chickens that lay blue and green eggs. <laughs> She's formerly a member of her town's historical commission and currently chairs the planning board in her town. She's an independent researcher of pre-colonial stone and earthworks of the Northeast. And she chairs the newly created Nera Preservation Committee. So today she's going to talk to us about the archaeoastronomy of tall turtle, Sarah. That lull between breakfast and lunch. <laughs> okay, so I live in Western Massachusetts, and um, I've been closely studying the stones on my property and surrounding properties. And on a walk up to one of the sites, I would often see this big boulder off the road, not too, too far. And it was very intriguing, but it was private land. And then one day that land went up for sale, and I said, I have to go check it out. So, next slide. Um, so, I'll preface this by saying, in the town where I live, in some of the early documents of the town and its founding, it's mentioned that there were two Nipmuc encampments, specifically named, one of them at a beautiful falls, that's the Thundering Falls. And if you wanted to have a private conversation, this is the place to go. No one could, could listen in on you and eavesdrop. So um, it states there in the town document that Metacom, Metacom at King Philip, and the Nipmuc tribal leaders met at those falls, strategizing for some of the battles of the King Philip's War. Next. Oh, sorry. You're right on it. Um, so, this is the place that I call Tall Turtle. This is the area in which the encampment was. This is 10 kilometers. So, the view shed, what's in green, bright green, is the view shed from the Tall Turtle Stone. And this is a 90 degree line. So right here is an observatory, and the observatory is directly in the new shed, and the equinox sunrise. There are a whole lot of features in this area, and um, more as you go up here. Until the talk yesterday about the flat plain where there are no stones is right here. So, next. This is the stone that I could see this backside of from the road. Um, we used to be a team of three. Kusa Pogo here was our mutual best friend. Um, a much younger piper. And this is as I saw it with debris and whatnot. And I was incredibly taken by what I saw. And the first thing I noticed, if we go to the next, is a row of stones, one, two, three, and a matching one in an alignment with a little compass array of stones. And I thought, okay, what do you see from here? So I put myself in the middle, I crouched down, and I looked up at the stone from a particular angle for the first time, and that's the next slide. Mm -hmm. Here are the three stones, one, two, three. I'm crouched down, I looked up, and I saw what appeared to me as the carapace of a, stone, of a turtle, the plastron, the left leg coming up with the chest and the neck arching up with this three-dimensional eye, two nostrils, and the beak. And when the sun hits it, you see the scales. And horizontally, here is this other image of an animal, a zoomorphic form with the foreleg, the hind leg, an almost anthropomorphic face. And these little bumps. So I vowed in that moment, because the land had gone up for sale, that I would find a way. 
and a shout out to Equity Trust of Amherst, Massachusetts, that they believed in my pitch and they loaned me the money at a fixed rate to buy this property. And I just made the last payment on the winter solstice. Um, next slide, please. So again, here's the turtle, and then you can begin to see the fil filtered light showing images along its front. Here are the three stones. So what really began to intrigue me as I got to know this boulder array is that it was many forms in one. If you look at it from one angle, you have this turtle. If you look at it from another angle, it is a bird, which I chose a picture in the snow because it really sets off the bird. And in the evening, when it becomes dark, it becomes like the head of a beast rising up out of the ground with its mouth open. And all of these things are important. Next, please. So, as I've been looking at these things, these things, these stones, these arrays, etc., um, I chanced to be a passenger in a car driving to Michigan, and I was able to follow them all the way from Massachusetts to Michigan. And the only place it was broken were cities and uh, clearings and developments. So from what I can gather, what I can see is that there are markings to align with specific horizon points. So you have point-to-point -point navigation. At the same time, in between where there are valleys, then you have other things to maintain your, your continuity, much as um, does everybody know the book um, in, you know, the name escapes me at the moment, but uh, it was about the ley lines of, of the British Isles. Marcus. Thank you. Um, do you remember the name of the book? Uh, no, no. Exactly. <laughs> anyway. Um, the straight, the straight, the straight track. The, yeah, the straight track. Of, yeah, something about this. Yeah. So anyway, I'm seeing that concept, which makes sense when you're walking on foot and you want to go to, from point A to point B, you have your far mark and then you have, you, you align yourself to your destination and then you have the way markers all the way along. So what it is, get this one, okay? Projective geometric transformations in the fourth dimension. That's what it is. You, you, you remember that. Projective <laughs> geometric transformations in the fourth dimension. Projective geometry is the vanishing point, essentially. Transformations means an uneven plane. The fourth dimension is you, observing and walking through it. X, Y, Z in time. You're Z. So in between, you have these uh, megaliths and then down and down and down to the point where I'm identifying these little tiny mosaics, which this was uncovered by my chickens. That's why I mentioned my chickens. My chickens have actually uncovered a lot of these really tiny things. This is actually a huge map of the Milky Way. So I moved my chickens because they were just not here, of course. Um, next slide. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for the next step down from the turtle, the megalith, and I find this stone circle, I find these magnificently shaped stones, and I find loads of petroglyphs. Now the petroglyphs are only visible at certain times of the year and certain times of the day, because you need the angle of the sun to strike and make the shadow apparent to see them. And we'll look at a beautiful one later. Next slide. The next step down are what I refer to as compass arrays. They are, they are small stones, often with individual marker stones. This one, if you crouch here and you look through here, through the center, through this stone, to the boulder behind it, that is the winter solstice sunrise. 
Next. Um, again, looking at that level, here's a very small one. Now this is higher ground, so this is small. Then you're looking through tall turtle. Now if you put this slide on the other side, so there's the backside of tall turtle and you keep going, so going like that. This is low ground, so it's much bigger, and that is your summer Milky Way alignment. Just off from this, also going through the turtle, is what they call the bear's ears, but you're going to have to wait until September for me to document that because that's when the bear's ears will rise. That's um, Ursa Major. Next, please. Okay, so solar alignments. What exactly do these three stones and then the ones down behind it mean? And by the way, we're going to look at this stone here. This stone is set to be exactly true north, but it has a notch in it, and that will be east. Okay? So, the first alignment that I photographed is this line, but I'm on the other side looking east. So this is, we're looking west. We're going to go on the other side and look east on the solstice morning. Next slide. It's hard to see in this bright light. I apologize. Um, but you can see the line continues. Solstice sunrise. Next slide. Now we'll go down and look at some of the other features. Here's the same. This is winter solstice sunrise. This stone is this stone. These three holes are these three holes. So if you're standing, you would see this. But if you crouch down, in front of this stone, you see it sit right on top. Just to the north is another boulder array. This boulder array is actually in that alignment to the tall turtle stone. And in between is a small turtle. They're all connected. Next slide. Um, now we go to winter solstice sunset. Um, there's a lot of mountain laurel here. All through here, it's very hard to actually catch the orb itself of the sun. But if you see here are two stones, you look through the middle of the two stones, and, and the, the tall turtle is, has a flat face, and that's where the winter solstice sunset is. This is a nearby sun that's reminiscent of a whale coming up out of a, a puddle of water. And again, the solstice sunset. It's about a thousand feet away, maybe less, um, is there. Now what's cool is the turtle has a tail. And when I look at this tail a couple times, this is the, I call it the turtle's tail, but this is right there. And if you go on the back side of the turtle, there's another alignment to pinpoint the winter solstice sunset right in that notch of the turtle's tail. Okay, next slide. Um, I meant to mention, so you all, you all know the, the pattern of the solstice to the solstice, and then you have the equinox, and then you have a cross quarter date. So you have the first cross quarter, equinox, second cross quarter, equi I mean uh, solstice, and then it goes back. So the second is also the third, and then the first is also the fourth. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Okay. So here's your first cross quarter of February. Next slide. Um, I caught it a little bit late here. Um, this is how it hits through the mountain moral, an offset picture of the bird. And again, where we move over one stone, and here is the February cross quarter over that stone. Next slide. Equinox. I put this slide in here as a cautionary tale. Um, you can see how close the neighbor is. This, is. this is the stone circle. And when the neighbor learned what I was doing, they took this little blue tractor and bulldozed every stone in the site on their side of the road over the bank because there was this fear 
that if this was shown to be true, it would somehow affect their ability to do what they want with their own land, which it would not. But in so doing, they have robbed all future generations of the knowledge that were in those stones. And they're now in a ragged heap with invasive species growing through them, buckthorn and what have you. Um, so be careful who you tell. Next slide. Sorry, I'm emotional. Whoops. Um, so here's Piper, again, a younger Piper. Now if she's standing here, or sitting here, and I crouch down here, I want you to see what we see between us. And um, so we'll go to the next slide, and this is a view across. I was sitting here, looking across. She was sitting right here. So you'll see all these small stones. Now these are the smaller stones that people typically step on, walk on, or move out of the way so they can look at the megalith. But I ask you to think about the megaliths in a different way because they only exist in their space because they are held in position by the network that holds them. It would be like explaining an elephant by putting it in a roadside zoo. You don't understand an elephant. It's these stones, all these small stones, that make the megaliths make sense. So this is the equinox sunrise. This stone right here, Where are we now? It's so dim, I'm having a hard time. Here we are. Okay, this, this little dark spot right here is this stone here. This stone is the one I'm going to be behind. That's here. So we'll go to the next slide, and this is what you see. You see this little thing poking up? That's that stone. The stone here has a divot in it to fit this. So you have this stone, divot, this stone behind it, and there's your equinox alignment. And there are more stones between, but this is what you line up. So if you go back one slide, there are other stones. So you line, you have to line everything up, point to point to point to point to point. Then when you have your general alignment, then you crouch down, and then you can fine tune it and have a precision point that is less than a degree. Okay, next slide again. So there you are. Precision. You can go down. That's okay. okay. <clears throat> so this is actually, you're looking across the horizontal stone of the tall turtle, and that's the tall turtle. Um, you can go on. Okay, a quick look at the sunset. Again, you have an alignment to the face. Um, this is an alignment of the sunset at the circle, the small circle. And this is sunset, and you get this idea that maybe this beast's head, can you see the beast's head? Mm -hmm. That maybe this beast's head is nipping at the sunset. Mm -hmm. Next slide. And then, thank you, Vance who happened to mention to me the day I was out photographing the equinox, he said, well, you know, the, the full moon rises right where the sun did this morning. So I ran back up there, and that's your full moon rising in the same spot that the sun did. That's cool. Next slide, please. OK, so again, I said the second and the third cross border are the same. Now, when I took this shot in August, I realized that there is this amazing little stone that I had noticed had a notch, but I wasn't in time to catch it. So I came back in, on May 1st, well, for the May 1st, which nowadays is actually the end of April. So I just took this picture the other day. There is the sun rising in that notch right there. And here is the divot in the stone before it, which is this stone here. And I am at that stone. So one, two, three stones in a row have a divot that lines up so that you nail that date 
on the correct date. <coughs> and when I looked at the pictures on the computer, I realized that within the matrix of the crystals, there is an eye for the pupil. Uh -huh. I didn't see that until I downloaded it to my computer. Okay, so this, we'll go to the next. Um, this is also the same, this is the sunrise. Remember I told you about, we're gonna look again at the turtle's tail. Well, there's a second stone, there's the turtle's tail. There's a second stone below it. Line them up, one, two, three, four. Here's the sunrise, now crouch down to this stone, put my face to this stone. This is that stone, and the sunrise is in there, right there. Wow. Only on two days of the year, which is the cross quarter, second and third cross quarter. Next slide, please. Okay. This is the cross quarter sunset. I just took this, also, just took this picture the other day. Now, it's getting closer. That sun is setting almost, the beast can almost stay. Next slide, please. Summer solstice sunrise. Um, very hard to photograph. I can't get it down any lower, we lose it completely. So we'll just go to the next, know that it's there. But here's what happens on the summer solstice sunset. <coughs> um, I went back and used a photograph before the actual sunset. So it's to the left, because it goes behind the tree when the event actually happens. The sun will come down and it'll land right there in this line, here's the divot, you look through here, here's the point, the sun sets right there, and it is swallowed. On the summer solstice sunset, the sun is swallowed. On the so go to the next slide. Winter solstice sunrise comes out, summer solstice sunset goes in. So there's your story. Yeah. Next slide, please. Um, I just love this picture. This is, this is the fall cross quarter. Um, it's where our, our Halloween and our, our um, Day of the Dead come from. And this is also one of the other images which is very hard to catch, but there's a bison right here. The lying down bison. Next slide. Okay, back to that early slide. Now we're going to leave the solar alignments for a minute and we're going to talk about sun play on, on the stone. So if you look right here on this prone stone and go to the next slide, I'll show you two close ups. You see these two knobs, and this knob has one, two, three. And this is what it looks like when it's hit by the sun. Now we're going to go behind it and look out as if it was in front of us. The next slide, it looks like that. Now you can't, you can't see in this light, but there's, there's a stone right here in the shadow. There's another stone here and there are other stones around, but I'm framing this stone. And I'll show you why. If you go to the next slide, fall cross quarter, uh-oh, we're off. Um, well, it's, it's enough. So here they are, one, two, framing this stone. There is a boulder right here. So if you look from the center point, through here, through this boulder that you can barely see there, there's your fall cross border alignment. Now again, here's that north-south stone. That's right here, it has a notch in it. So if you turn to this angle, looking through the two ears, if you will, right through the notch, then there's your equinox. Now the equinox actually should be right here when I took the picture, but I was late. But there you go. It's, it's, within a couple degrees. And there are stones so that you have 
so that you have an alignment between those two ears, you have an alignment all the way across from solstice to solstice. Okay, next slide, please. Um, all right, this is one of the petroglyphs that's only visible for a very short period of time at certain times of the year. It's very hard to see in this dim light, but you have a 90 degree angle here. And then you have what are almost like wings coming down and you have these zigzags and, and arcs here, and there are arcs here. And then at certain times, you see a tail. Sometimes it looks very much like a raven with its rounded tail. Um, sometimes it looks more like an eye or something. There's a circle right here. Let's go to the next slide so we can see. Maybe that's a little bit better. Can you see the arcs? One, two, three, and then here. And there are also zigzags here. There's a circle here. A circle here. And it's going up. Next slide. You're down to five minutes. Down to five minutes. That's, that's fine. No problem. So it also... I see math. When I look at this, I see it. I see a mathematical stuff and it happens next slide that this stone also has this precision point right here through this stone this looks like one big stone it's actually not this is the stone right here 90 degrees to the equinox sunrise precision point next um all right looking at the face of the turtle there's all kinds of stuff that can only be seen when the sh shadow light hits it. These are details taken along the space, and we'll just go forward so you can see more. Um, looking at the whole stone, we're going to look at the shadow light here, and here, and this. So go to the next slide. Oh, you can't see it in this light. Go to the next slide. Can, it, can, can people see this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you see the, the carvings? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So there's three views of it at different angles. Mm -hmm. Go to the next slide, please. Here's the whole thing. Can you all see that? Mm -hmm. There's something there. There's something really big and important there. Next slide. I, I upped the contrast and saturated it a little bit to see if it was more visible. Did that, did that help? Yeah. Does that pop it out? <laughs> Next slide. Okay. Um, this is looking at the bottom part of that view of the um, illuminated edge. And then here's two close-up views of this little profile here. If you want to see the profile, it's sort of moon-shaped, half-moon-shaped. There's something going on up here, and then I see this eye, nose, two different mouths, depending on the lighting. Mm -hmm. And um, sort of the, the body part is condensed, and here, and then it goes way up. Next slide. Uh, this is the leg, the bottom of the leg. It's really hard to see. Um, you see here, there's a square. A square. There's a circle. And then this is all carved. It's, it somewhat looks to me like one of those little, uh, some sort of creature with the head and the body going down, foreleg, hind leg. Whatever it is, it's only illuminated at a very short period of the time, twice a year, which is now. Next slide. That's another view of it. You see it better? There's also a circle above it, the sort of donut shape. And all over the stone there are these little designs that only when the sun hits it for a few minutes you see these little designs as if 
it was so weathered, but you could still see the, the once um, worked design. Next slide, please. Okay, and a little creature in the middle. And a hint of what's this side. Um, your eye, open mouth, little arm, and there's a square and a square and circles. Next slide, different views of it. Can you all see that? What do you see? What do I see? Um, so I see a zoomorphic image. That this would be the eye, this would be the open mouth, this would be the back, this is the forearm coming forward. Maybe go back one slide. Yeah, go forward again. And then go forward to the next one. There's another view of it. Mm. Wow. So it comes up and it disappears. And unfortunately, it's visible when there are leaves. So catching it on both sides is difficult because those are the two ears that you look through. And this, in its own right, is a carved image. Um, go to the next slide. Can you wrap up now? Yep. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. Here's that. Go to the next slide. We'll just zoom through it. This is the foreleg. This is the hind leg. That, that image on that long stone. Go to the next slide. There. And you can see it best. This is, in this image, you don't see the face well, but here's the foreleg, the hind leg, and there are more circles and angles, etc. So hard to see in this uh, overly lit room, but go ahead to the next slide. This is a close up of that. Um, next slide. So hard to see. Next slide is the end. But if you go to the next slide, <laughs> Um, and hit play. Tom Elmore, back in 2019, did a photogrammetry of it. This stone has fallen from its original position. So anyone can do photogrammetry with a smartphone. And Tom Miller. <laughs> well, you can do it on your own song. Yeah. Yes, you can, you can download a program. A lot of them are free. Um, there's no time for questions. That's right. Thank you very All much. Right, thank uh, you.